So you're ready to hop into high level so you can get started in attribution and you'd like to as well set up those ads reporting or even just understand what attribution is within high level. This video is going to show you this and more. Let's go ahead and hop in together. So what is attribution? Attribution in its simplest terms is just a breakdown of which channel or source created a contact or like where did it come from? It's paramount or critical. Uh, in determining which ad source you have that is doing the best or bringing the most traffic to you. So for example, if I'm running mul uh, ads from multiple channels such as Facebook and Google, I'd like to know which one's best for my money. Should I be spending more money on Google? Should I be spending more money on Facebook? Are any of them even making me money or leads? Attribution Report is going to help you with that. Within attribution reporting in high level, we have two different types of uh, attribution attributions in high level. We have the first and the latest. The first is the first interaction. It, what it means is uh, if somebody interacts with our website or our system multiple times for a contact, it will record the first one and it will record the most latest one. And so... Uh, pardon me, I may say last. What I meant was latest. Uh, and so, oh, here, seeing the uh, Apple emojis, forgive me. Uh, and so you're going to see the first one and the latest. And so the latest is always going to change, but the first will not change. And so, for example, when somebody fills out a contact us form uh, and then later on comes back later to fill out a two-step order form, it's going to it's gonna attribute both uh, – both sessions, but the first session is going to be the first one. The latest one is going to be the latest one. But if they come back in later and do something else on your website, it's going to then re-record the attribution data from that. And so hence you get the first one, which normally doesn't change. And then you have the latest one, which changes based on the most recent activity. Where do you locate contact attribution data? It's actually located within the contact settings. Uh, or contacts within a sub account. Uh, you select the contact. Once you select the contact, you go to activities, and then from activities, you drop down here and hover over these uh, question marks. You're going to see the session source, and then underneath session source, you can see additional UTM uh, data. Um, and so that will be within this, you're going to notice that there are a number of different types of attribution sources. And so what are these session? What is this session source and uh, what do they, each of them mean? Let's walk through those. Paid search is basically Google ads. Uh, and so when somebody searches for you uh, using a paid search or paid ads via a search function, uh, it's going to record it as this. So when you're setting up your Google Ads reports, be sure to use the, temp the tracking template here. More information below when I review that, as well as if you're ready to hump into that now to set up your Google Ad reporting, you can just click this link right here. Uh, this is a breakdown of all the UTM parameters as well, and you'll see these as well in high level uh, as well. So I can show you that right now. So I'm in a workflow and within a contact, I can actually locate any of this information from within a workflow for, from the contact. So you see here, uh, UTM source URL, all these other things. These are all first and latest attribution data. I can use that in a workflow. For example, maybe I want to tell this contact, Hey, thanks for coming from, and maybe, uh, I want to say the ad source that came from. So thanks for coming from Facebook, uh, to buy my product. Uh, how was your experience? And so maybe I want to say that. Maybe I don't. Or maybe I want to create a condition that says is, um, and then once I locate the latest attribution uh, session source, let's go all the way down here. And then maybe I only want to do something specific for everybody that came in through paid social. I can do that uh, within a, with, the with the contact data and an if-else condition in a workflow. And as you could tell within the custom values, that's kind of what these are. So they're all labeled. And then they, when you set up your, uh, your Google ads tracking template, it will do that right there. And we have a similar setup, very similar for paid social. Social comes from Facebook or Instagram. Uh, and here is what the UTM or, or final URL should look like from the ad. Uh, you'll see those right here. And here's how you set up the Facebook ad reporting. Again, we'll review that more in detail below. Direct traffic means I just opened up a link and filled out the form. So I didn't come from any other place. I actually just opened the link directly and then filled out the form or something. So there's no, like, I, I literally just opened the link and then filled out the form. Uh, and so that's the direct traffic. Uh, organic search, I came from Google or other place and landed on the page and then filled out a form. That means I came from Google. It's an organic search. That's what that means. Similarly, 
uh, if I'm on social media and I click on a page from a social media uh, and it's not a paid ad with UTM parameters, uh, it will classify it as a social media because it came from Facebook. That's where I found and clicked on the app was from uh, from the link uh, from Facebook. Referrals, uh, it means let's say I my friend has a blog and on that blog they put my website because they were highlighting it. Well, let's say a viewer comes in and clicks on that clicks on that link on my friend's blog and it goes to my website and they fill out something. It would attribute as a referral because it came from another blog. It came from another website. That was the attribution, it came from another website. Boom, that is a referral. Others is like, let's say there's an SMS, an email, a WhatsApp message, Facebook Messenger message. You'll see all those here. Actually, Facebook Messenger, uh, that, that's not right. Um, so, but, uh, oh wait, yeah, it is. That's embarrassing, right there. Uh, and so here, there's going to be kind of a bunch of other options and stuff that you'll see. And so just know, like, if you see, though, it's not one of these main ones. Uh, don't be surprised. There are other attribution sources. CRM URI means it was manually created within high level. Third party means like a zap or a third party integration. So now it's helpful to stop and to see what actually records attribution in high level. So just because a contact visits a website, that doesn't mean that it's recorded in high level or they visit a website from an ad that doesn't mean it's recorded in high level. Here's what makes something recorded in high level. It's when one of these things happens. So when the information is there, like the UTM parameters are present or, or they land on a source from there, uh, it will fill it in only when one of these four actions happen. So it needs to be a form or a survey submission, a booking, uh, calendar booking form submission, a chat widget form submission, or an order form submission. Are we seeing a pattern here? It needs to be some kind of form submission where we capture the data and then within that we store the information in the form submission and then into the contact with the attribution data. That's the only way that we could get it to work there uh, in these. Um, and so it's also for the note here, it has to be a high level form survey, chat widget, booking widget, um, or or order form. Uh, if it's something else, it will not work. Even if the UTM parameters are present, it will not work. So you have to, it has to be a high level form and it needs to be set up correctly. A quick caveat, uh, let's say several things happen for the contact before they filled out the form, uh, which one's attributed? Cause it came from a friend's website, but the friend's website, then they found an ad and you know, what happens when there's multiple sources present? It will pick uh, in this order. So uh, if one of these are present, it will pick the top one. So if, if let's say one, three and five are present, it will pick one. If three, if three, four, and nine is present, it will pick three. Let's see, so it always pick the most one. Now, if you're ready or whenever you're ready to set up your ad reporting, you can just go to one of these two docs. We have a Facebook ad reporting set up to where you can set up your Facebook ad reporting in Facebook. Uh, so it's very self-explanatory. We got it all here. You just fill it out, you map them here. Uh, and then once you fill those out there, it will come into high level cleanly. Thing happens with Google Ad Search. Uh, Google Ad Search, though, the internal UI and stuff like that's a little different. So you'll need to follow the screenshots and then put in this uh, tracking template. Once you put in this tracking template, it'll be able to work for you. Next, uh, what happens if something else? Oh, uh, and a quick caveat this will take care of how uh, reporting looks in high level. So uh, this will not take care of, like, well, once it converted in high level and something happened in high level, what if I want to fully track that in Facebook reporting? What do I do, Jarbs? We have other things like the Facebook event pixel that you can check out here. We also have the meta pixel here. Um, and then, you know, for Google, we have the Google for analytics tracking, um, understanding reporting technology, troubleshooting a guide for Google ad reporting. And so there's a number of tools here that will hopefully help you when you're trying to do reporting successfully in other systems. So we don't cover that here because we can't control other systems. However, if you set up the ads and stuff correctly here, this will make everything work well in high level. Uh, and then you can make it talk back to your other systems via hopefully these other sites, um, as well as, you know, consulting and figuring out as you go. Now, what happens if an ad doesn't work, uh, or not Not if an ad doesn't work? What happens if ad reporting isn't working or it's not working correctly? Here's what you can check. You can, first of all, just triple check uh, that whatever you did um, uh, didn't have any misspellings, any spaces, and that the case sensitivity matters. So whatever it says in the Google setup or the Facebook ad setup, 
do it. Uh, and so, and what I mean by that is just recheck it. So relook at the tracking URL, relook at your parameters, make sure they type them in correctly. If you type them in wrong, uh, it's not gonna work. And so that includes case sensitivity or any spaces. Confirm that the submission is happening on the final URL. And so the final URL, again, is the fancy term for whatever the URL looks like after uh, a contact clicks on the ad. So I'm scrolling and I click on an ad, it opens up a URL. Oftentimes there's a long UTM parameter that with all the tracking stuff in it that we need. That is called the final URL. When somebody lands on here with that final URL, they, they cannot navigate away in high level. If they do, it will remove that UTM parameter. And if the UTM parameter is not present, when they fill out the form, it won't attribute the data. So let me show you what I mean here. So let's say I landed here from a ad and you see here, my UTM parameters are all here. Everything's now gonna be clean. So if I submit a form on this page, it's gonna work. But what happens if I click another button and it doesn't stay on this page? What happens if it navigates to another page? And so I'm gonna click here. And you can see here, I'm now on another page. Let's say on this page, I decide to uh, fill out a um, fill out a form or something like that. And so I click on this button here, and then it takes me to this page. And then finally on this page, I fill out the form. But look at this. So here, do you see all these UTM parameters? But then I click this button, and then it goes here. There are no UTM parameters. So now all the other additional attribution data that was there in the UTM parameters won't show. So funny enough, I was actually helping a client yesterday, and this happened, and it's easy to miss. So what we can do here is actually install this as a pop-up, or so it just opens a pop-up, or I click on the or I click on this, and it actually scrolls down to a section where I fill out the information. Regardless. I need to stay on this page when I land on it. So that's really important. So be sure that you're doing that when you're setting up your ads uh, in your journey. Lastly, do not add any uh, custom UTM parameters to your Facebook, Instagram, or Google ads. So uh, please make sure you use our high level UTM templates as instructed in the setup directions. So don't uh, add any other UTM parameters or something to your tracking. If you do, it could cause a breakage or it could cause error so if you are doing that and it was working but it's not try removing it or maybe if you are doing that and it's not working remove it uh and so because uh it could mess it up so okay well thank you all so much this is uh basically a quick cash cra crash course of understanding uh attribution source in high level as well as getting started in ad reporting set up uh, by understanding the attribution session source really appreciate your time uh together and let's keep leveling up together i'll see you around